Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Maryam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about Pakistan's relations with Kenya. Uh, of course, uh, Pakistan's relations with Kenya were established in 1960s and Kenya got independence from the British rule in 1963 and Pakistan also raised voice for Kenyan independence. In, in today's program, we will be exploring uh, multifaceted aspects of these relations, of course, multilateral uh, ties between both countries uh, as well. Of course, we know about Pakistan's engage Africa policy what is the significance of this policy when we talk about uh, expanding Pakistan ties with countries in the region specifically Kenya we will be talking about in that in today's program we will be talking about the challenges uh, that both countries uh, face in their uh, respective regions and what are the prospects uh, and of course when we talk about the trade volume between Pakistan and Kenya that stands uh, at 648 million dollars but it has a potential to reach at around uh, 2 billion dollars uh, what are the challenges and how to counter those challenges we will be exploring in today's program we will also be talking about BRI and significance of a west corridor in today's program as well uh, to discuss this and more we are joined in the studios by ambassador Naila Chohan uh, welcome to the program and and we are also joined by Mr. Shir Yar Khan, who is expert in international affairs. Welcome to the program. Uh, we are joined online uh, by Dr. Hussain Jawed, who is economist and expert in international affairs. Welcome to the program. Um, of course, um, Ambassador Naila, let me start with you uh, because you played an important role when we talk about Engage Africa policy. We'll be exploring uh, in depth uh, that policy as well. But let's talk about with the basic question uh, how Pakistan's relations uh, with Kenya have evolved historically, of course. Um, in 1963, uh, Kenya got independence from the British rule and they have a colonial, uh, you know, uh, mutual history as well in that. Uh, respect. Uh, so, how do you think, uh, what is the significance of diplomatic ties between both the countries and how these ties have evolved over time? Well, Kenya, um, since I'm glad you have uh, taken Kenya as one of your focal countries in Africa, it has a very important uh, role. You mentioned correctly that the relations were developed in 1960s in which Pakistan played an important role in their independence from the British rule. But then that same British rule becomes a binding factor when it comes to Commonwealth. So both Kenya and Pakistan are members of Commonwealth as well. Then Kenya is also one of the UN headquarters <coughs> when it comes to climate. Of course. So UNEP, United Nations Environmental Program is based in Nairobi. And uh, therefore, climate is an important element between our two countries and globally also. Then coming down to bilateral, bilateral relations have also uh, gained strength from strength over the years, uh, particularly the political ties. Unfortunately, the political ties are not commensurate with the trade ties that we have had. And there are many factors to it, which I'm sure hmm. during the so program what, we'll ask. What are the basic challenges when you, we talk about the establishment of these political uh, relations between both the countries? And also, uh, when we talk about the exchange of uh, diplomatic delegates between both the countries, uh, do you think uh, there, sh there is need to do more uh, in that regard? Uh, well, you have established proper embassies between the two countries. And now you're further enhancing it. Uh, after this look, uh, Africa policy in the foreign office in the 2013, then we converted it to engage Africa policy. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Commerce came up with look Africa policy again from the trade perspective. So both these uh, organization institutions of Pakistan synchronized to work forward. But when it comes to benefit or the, between the relations and diplomatic relations, now they're also thinking of opening a trade office in Lagos. And uh, they're also thinking of opening uh, their consulate in Karachi. So uh, further fortification of diplomatic relations 
is uh, in the process. Of course, that is in the process. Also, coming uh, to the geopolitical dynamics, of course, keeping in mind uh, the changing dynamics in Africa as well as in uh, South Asia, how do you see that uh, Pakistan and Kenya, uh, you know, sees their role and what is uh, the current uh, bilateral ties uh, between uh, both the countries and what is the potential of these ties? Uh, so, Marim, uh, first of all, I would like to take forward the uh, comment you gave that Kenya and Pakistan have a very similar colonial history and a col colonial past and which has now co converted into more of a cooperative uh, relationship. Another thing that really binds the Kenyan and Pakistani people is the love for tea. And Pakistan Of imports course, Pakistan is the biggest importer of tea, <laughs> tea. <laughs> And it's like uh, around half a billion dollars. Yes. So it like ranges between 400 to 500 million mm. dollars worth of tea that we basically import from Kenya. Other than that, um, Kenya being a gateway to East Africa mm -hmm. is, as Madam Naila basically said, is the hub of the UN as well. And UN uh, carries out a lot of their operations in Somalia, uh, Sudan, South Sudan, and neighboring countries through Nairobi. So Nairobi is basically a hub in that case as well. Other than these connections, there's a huge Pakistani diaspora over there as well. Uh, over there in the local language, they're called the Mohindis. And the Mohindis are those uh, people from the subcontinent that migrated to Africa with the British Army. And they played a very important role in the B British Army over there as well and like, establishing the railway networks uh, throughout Kenya. And those people, after the independence, chose to stay in um, uh, Kenya. And now they have like a lot of like businesses over there. They uh, conduct, uh, they have like factories, they have industries. And they're a very vibrant uh, diaspora that uh, basically connects Pakistan and uh, <coughs> Kenya. Other than that, like there are like a lot of like trade relations and as you talked about the uh, strategic partnership that Pakistan and uh, Kenya enjoy is the connection between the Mombasa port and the Gawadar port of that we can discuss right. uh, later. Right, we will be talking trade. about that later in the program, but uh, I want to touch upon uh, the economic ties between Pakistan and Kenya. Um, uh, Dr. Sen, can you tell us about the current uh, you know, trade uh, uh, volume, of course, I've already uh, touched upon that. But uh, what are some of the commodities that both countries uh, are importing and exporting? And what are the challenges when we talk about uh, these economic ties between Pakistan and Kenya? The very important thing is, like, if I talk about the trade balance between the Kenya in uh, 2021, there are so many issues which has to be resolved and, uh, in 2021. We have been resolved all these issues majorly in the rice and the tea so uh, later in the program i'll discuss all these but in 2021 pakistan export is 20 uh, to 207 million to kenya and the rice used clothing packaging uh, and then is a uh, medicines uh, some of the tea uh, then is the uh, uh, dyed legumes and the carbonates these have been uh, exported to the uh, uh, from the pakistan so uh, these are the area, but the major area and the turnout, and still we are not extending up to the three billion. The major issue uh, that is that we are still in the uh, phase of the millions. Why don't we go to the billion type? Because the tariff war between the Pakistan and Kenya, which has been uh, finished now, but the situation erupted between the two countries when Pakistan imposed the testation fee in response to Kenya's taxation of uh, Pakistani rice at 75 percent uh, in 2007. The fee which has been charged at the rate of 0.5 percent of the total export volume had made Kenya tea more expensive in Pakistan. And um, let me tell you, we are importing a tea about 600 million. So 600 million of the tea is importing. So you can understand that the 600 million of the dollar we are just spending on the tea so we have to uh, negotiate on this issue so the tariff war between the pakistan and the kenya has finally ended after the pakistan and on august 16 2021 right. and announced the removal of the testation of the fee charged by the pakistani high commission in nairobi on the tea exports to pakistan from the kenya tea trade uh, trader which was major impediment in the bilateral trade then is a potential business opportunity of pakistan which is the pharmaceutical right, right. we will be talking about rice, the potential business we will be talking about the potential business opportunities, Dr. Sen, but I want to touch upon, uh, of course, we know that there is potential of reaching uh, the trade volume of $2 billion. So uh, what kind yes. of mechanisms uh, should be there or are there some mechanism, mechanisms in place to facilitate uh, the trade between uh, Pakistan and Kenya? 
because we also See, know that pakistan we, is looking to expand its uh, you know economic ties in uh, other countries of the african region as well of course we need uh, preferential trade agreements in african uh, union and other uh, important blocks of the africa See, um, Kenya is now the part of the global uh, south. So we need to understand that uh, if there is a global south, the whole world is uh, going towards the global south. Even uh, in G20, India is, uh, I mean, uh, taking pseudo uh, staring uh, 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 in their hand for the south, uh, south of the Africa, which is not true. So for that reason, we must have to have the I mean, transactional element, bilateral trade agreements, multilateral trade agreements, and fo uh, most focusedly, we have to deal in the product because uh, the major product, uh, as uh, Sharyar uh, uh, rightly pointing out, the two important things, the Mombasa and the Gawadar port. So we have the shortest route between the Kenya. So we must have to focus the bilateral trade agreement. It should be on the zero rating. And there must be uh, uh, zero sum rating on the tariff so that we can export maximum amount of the product here and from there. And that's the important export can turn into the th uh, three to four and even approximately in my calculation, it could be go up to the $10 billion. There are a lot many things which can go there. So uh, if, uh, if the strength, if I cover about that, there is a, a more strength in the surgical instrument, we have more strength of like, for example, USD 80 million of approximately. Then is the sea route of the Karachi. Mombasa port is also privileged for the both countries. And then is uh, also the duty drawbacks of the 2% of export, non-traditional market like Africa and others. So Ministry of Textile and Commerce of Pakistan has allowed an additional duty. So we need to uh, uh, work on the drawback of the 2% export from non-traditional market like Africa. And then there is a breakdown of the minimum as compared to the other uh, transport. So there is a good supply right. chain between the Kenya and Pakistan, but there is a weakness also. So what we have is an energy tariff. We must have to work on the energy tariff right. is higher than the regional competitor. Very important thing I am going to discuss. The, it raises the average unit price of the Pakistan product and very narrow export base and the export base is dominated by rice. Moreover, domestic product of the rice is among the big four agenda of the Kenya government and it is also reflected in the recent decline of the Pakistani export of rice to Kenya. Right, of course, that, that is important. And uh, Mr. Shahjar, when we talk about uh, these uh, trade ties, of course, uh, Pakistan is also looking uh, to expand uh, its uh, market into other countries of the African region. So what are the challenges when we talk about preferential trade agreement with African Union and other important uh, African blocs? And what needs to be done? What kind of mechanisms should be in place? So, uh, Mariam, after the... Uh, East African policy that was developed by the Loki East Africa policy. There were like a lot of like uh, various trade, trade development uh, arms established in various uh, embassies in East Africa. What we basically need to do is do a comprehensive analysis on what are the key imports by East African economies. What exactly are they importing? What are their needs? From what I have observed, like mostly there's like a big market for agricultural products because this area other than Kenya and the surrounding countries as well, they basically go through a lot of like droughts drought, uh, and like yes. lack of rain. So there's like a lot of like uh, uh, agricultural produce that is imported by a lot of these countries. So that is a big market that Pakistan can tap. Mm. Other than so that, we need to diversify or? Diversify as well. And in every program, we basically talk about value added products. Mm. Uh, we have to like move away from just like exporting uh, raw material in the form of cotton. That there is a small market mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Kenya as well where we export our cotton. We export textiles, uh, but not in the uh, quantity that is like required to build, uh, you know, a big uh, chunk of trade. So these are like some of the areas. Other than that, the pharmaceutical imports in East Africa are huge. Mm. So Pakistan can tap on that as well. So because Pakistan produces a lot of ph pharmaceutical products, A-grade ph pharmaceutical <coughs> uh, medicine at a very low cost. And Pakistani products, and we've discussed in uh, various programs, they're not really finding a market in Europe because of the quality standards mm. and because of the uh, value-added products that are needed over there and right. the type of uh, expertise you need to have 
to develop products at that standard. Of course, we keep on in, uh, you know. So uh, East Africa is the uh, uh, geographical area that is like more conducive for Pakistani exports and that is like something we need to explore more. Right, and yeah. of course we need to diversify uh, our trade to reach the potential of $2 billion. But let's talk about Engage Africa policy. Uh, what are some of the key uh, sector areas uh, that were focus of uh, this Engage Africa policy and uh, how does this uh, policy aligns with Pakistan's foreign policy objectives with its relations with uh, Kenya? You always have a compound question. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, uh, when it comes to engage Africa, it is engagement in all levels. It is political engagement, it is uh, economic engagement, economic and trade, then also uh, people to people contact, so there are various uh, levels of engagement, mm. but obviously trade is a very important element. Mm. Now, if you look at Africa, it is consolidating itself also. So Africa is also in transition. So you have EAC, East Africa, uh, you know. Uh, similarly, when you mentioned about the African, uh, you know, uh, Union, Union uh, AU also, and also their customs, uh, Mm, uh, organization they are establishing. Pakistan is already inviting them as observers and Pakistan wants to be observer in those organizations so that when we open our trade offices when which we did when the Ministry of Commerce held its uh, uh, envoys conference in 2019 so more trade offices were decided of course, to be opened. Of course, and that was a significant step of yes. for opening so up and exploring mm, those markets. Exactly. So once you have these trade offices on the ground, they can then uh, do all the homework, be observers in these organizations. Like Sheryar said, we need to understand what they demand of us and we need to understand what we can do in this phytosanitary uh, agreements are very important because we wanted to export our fruits and vegetables to them because as Sharia said agriculture is a problem for them. Of course, of course. But until we take our exports uh, to a level where international standards are met. Uh, are met you really can't promote your trade. Of course, of course, that is an important aspect when we talk about uh, engage Africa policy. But let's talk about other developments because uh, this is a multi-layered and multifaceted policy that yes. covers all uh, the segments. Can you tell us about uh, some of the latest developments or initiatives that have helped uh, strengthening Pakistan's ties uh, with Af uh, with Kenya? And of course, uh, what needs to be done when we talk about implementation of uh, this policy? Well, uh, we are doing in the area of security, counterterrorism. We have uh, training of their people in various fields, whether it's diplomacy, whether it's banking, whether it's uh, defense forces, then maritime, and uh, like it was spoken of, Gwadar and Mombasa ports. Now, uh, blue economy also is a good uh, platform for cooperation because. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, uh, potential, but we haven't realized the potential because of our uh, lack of technology for packaging and uh, keeping that standard because uh, the marine uh, products are perishable. So we need to have that technology so that we can export and Mombasa port would offer us a great opportunity. So um, blue economy is an uh, option. Uh, security is a good mm. uh, opportunity. They are facing a lot of problems. We have developed, uh, I mean, we have been successful in fight against terrorism. So we have developed good institutions uh, where we can help their people for training and our people <coughs> can participate in their efforts for counterterrorism. So there are many areas and then education also is a very good field. Uh, not only the vocational training, but uh, proper education, whether it's engineering Right, there's or a lot medicine. that needs to be done and yes. we will be uh, discussing in detail about blue economy as well. But Dr. Hussain, I want to talk about Pakistan's strategic location as the western anchor of CPAC. Uh, so uh, how do you perceive uh, Kenya's interest in becoming uh, part of BRI and uh, this connectivity, how this can, uh, you know, enhance Pakistan's relations with Kenya? 
if i would say that they have no other option than the gawadat then uh, of course i am uh, very right and uh, if the other uh, people have the different uh, opinion they would have but i think the area of the collaboration pakistan and kenya are involved in the bilateral trade of rice and tea by gawadar port in uh, pakistan and uh, port mombasa in kenya so that's mean that gawadar gawadar is most focal area as uh, mr shahri are pointing out on a very uh, important niche of the product or top 10 product or when we start with the different agriculture product because the most potential and focus area is the agriculture so why not we can use the better supply chain in a shortest route which is these both have the great potential to supplement the blue economies of the uh, both countries blue economies must have the great of the supply chain so the greatest of the supply chain give uh, the uh, as we have the biggest birth over there in the gawadar and fortunately we have been gifted this place uh, by of course uh, uh, by, by the god of course i can say that but we have to use it now and the chinese are there and we can uh, uh, i mean potentialize in the different way so the newly launched lamu port in the kenya the largest deep water port in the sub saharan region and can help pakistan product make a niche in the african continent and as well uh, the other areas uh, if i talk about like for example the growing trade and ties which has been uh, settled down and which was being expressed by 2020 uh, there are lot many exercise been done but growing right. pakistan kenya ties line with the pakistan growing outreach to africa and pakistan has been increasingly engaging with uh, uh, kenya besides removing the tariffs and feel right, the right. we've already the touched upon the tariffs as well and uh, what needs to be done to uh, counter those issues but mr shayar i want to touch upon uh, bri and uh, the importance of this western corridor uh, what are some of the initiatives in which kenya has potential to invest in and how do you see that what needs to be done uh, to you know fast pace uh, the you know project uh, uh, working on that specific project so um when it comes to uh, trade eastwards for kenya uh, i don't think there is any other product other than tea that they can export to this area what we have to basically look at is the international trade traffic moving from southeast asia central asia through gawadar to the mombasa port so this is the, this has like much more potential than we focusing on kenya uh, coming in like uh, uh, you know investing in um, uh, you know our special economic zones or our port or our areas so when it comes to the trade traffic the international trade traffic i see a lot more potential uh, westwards uh, using the economies that are here and they basically get a you know um, area port special economic zones where they can set up their logistics where they can like uh, set up packaging for their products and then those products can be exported from the gawadar port to the african economy that would be more uh, feasible other than that are like there are there some regulatory challenges when we talk about um, mombasa port and uh, gawadar port and the trade that is happening between these two I don't think there is any trade re- happening right now but there is potential in the mm. future. So there is need yeah. for a uh, regulatory framework works to be developed for this uh, these ports to actually work and you know enhance the trade volume between two countries. Yes there needs to be a lot more uh, agreements I would say and but first of all we would need to keep our trade at a volume in which this is feasible. if we just like keep on uh, exporting commodities like our rice to uh, kenya and like getting their tea here that's not enough to basically you know get an investment of that uh, magnitude to uh, rather we would like focus on central asia we would like focus more on economies that are like more conducive uh, for that investment because whenever we make plans of like connecting ports we have to like keep in mind that there is a huge factor of investment like who would basically invest and if we have to get multilateral institutions mm. or countries to basically in- invest in like connecting ports that has to be economically viable and feasible so uh, what pakistan can basically do is like come up with a plan on like exporting products from central asia or it can be energy it can be uh, it services it could also be you know uh, medicine or pharma all of these areas that we've like talked about but they have to be uh, exported in a volume in which the countries basically see that yes this is like something we can invest in right now i don't see that like potential uh, growing in the near future as well mm-hmm. because what we are basically doing we're going in the other direction we are cutting down on our imports our import bill is huge 
and 500 billion dollars of tea pakistan is already like thinking of diversifying that as well so more focus on exports but exploring markets that can be tapped in east africa that's like right, something that right. we have and to focus on right and when we talk on. about expo exploring these markets can you elaborate on the concept of blue economy and how uh, pakistan and kenya uh, should be collaborating uh, to you know uh, enhance their ties in maritime sector so when we talk about the blue economy it comes more as a concept of sustainability rather than exploitation of our ocean resources so this basically covers developing livelihoods and developing sustainability of the marine marine uh, life so in that uh, area pakistan is like quite weak uh, we have like our ports in you know port qasim karachi port and we do like a lot, we have like a huge uh, um, exclusive economic zone where we do our fi uh, fisheries but we have to like also remember that there have been uh, historically a lot of like huge oil spills over there as well so that is like destroying the concept of blue economy when it comes to sustainability right but given uh, kenya's extensive coastline and pakistan's of course uh, proximity to the arabian sea uh, what needs to be done because there is a lot of potential when we talk about blue economy so the biggest potential that i see in blue economy that is in gawadar and the communities surrounding gawadar because that's like a very nascent uh, port there's not a lot of work being done so incorporating this uh, concept of blue economy and sustainability when it comes to developing a blue economy that is a concept that <coughs> we have to like start in gawadar so what can we do over there so uh, uh, fisheries sustainability other than that sustainability of the marine life and keeping the local population on board when the whole uh, concept of uh, the port city is being developed and building these uh, uh, stakes of the local population in which they get educated they also get technical expertise and they get like the proper machinery or sustainability that comes when de uh, developing a blue economy right now right now pakistan this like whole uh, concept of blue economy is very new This of is course, like something is, that we just very like explore and of course of course uh, we are talking about pakistan's relations with kenya and there is a lot of potential uh, in uh, of course blue economy as well and uh, when we talk about mar maritime tourism that is a whole new avenue in which both countries can work we will be discussing more about it but after a short break Welcome back. We are talking about Pakistan's relations with Kenya, and of course, there's a lot of potential, uh, specifically when we talk about uh, blue economy. So, Investor Naila, of course, uh, you earlier also mentioned about uh, blue economy as well. So, what are some of the strategies that, in your opinion, should be in place uh, to promote uh, sustainable uh, marine life? And also, uh, when we talk about uh, maritime tourism, that is also a whole new uh, area where there is a lot of potential. What needs to be done when we talk about Pakistan and Kenya? Uh, basically you have to do a lot of work at home you have to develop that infrastructure so that you can have i mean you have gawadar port but uh, does it have those packaging and you know what you call them uh, those warehouses warehouses where warehouses. you keep your package material before putting them on the ship with right temperatures so that it doesn't go bad before you put it on the cold ship cold storage yeah. cold storage mm -hmm. all these uh, things need to be developed once you have got that then sky is the limit because your then uh, marine uh, blue economy can expand not only to africa but to other parts of the world be it latin america be it europe be it north america but you have to first have the right infrastructure you have all the uh, marine life which is of very good quality and this i can tell you because i've been in international conferences i know that pakistan's the marine life is superb of course uh, but uh, because we lack that technology for packaging for exporting we cannot really benefit from the resources that allah subhanahu wa taala with benefit 
you know, blessed us with. Of course. Uh, Dr. Sen, when we talk about infrastructure development and connectivity, how do you see that this uh, Western corridor uh, complements other uh, important corridors within the region and what needs to be done uh, to enhance Pakistan's ties uh, with Kenya, specifically when we talk about connectivity? See, as far as connectivity is concerned, it is one of the ideal route. Uh, if I talk about the Pakistan distance to Kenya, is about 4,007 36 kilometers, which is very small in a way. So with the, uh, with the major export to that, uh, I mean, ex uh, with expensive as compared to the Middle East, so where the demand of the same is also high, so the major regional uh, competitor, uh, competitor in the market are the India and the China, and Pakistan is less competitive than the India and China. So that is the best way to have this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, all of the seaports and to the Gawadar or to the uh, Ben Qasim port, we are the wonderful way within the uh, Kenya and we can reach to the western uh, coastal side. So this is a, a, a fastest route uh, in that way. So I think uh, the, uh, the so, infrastructure technology So what are the challenges or, uh, when we talk about happen, development of this route? So many glitches. There right. So, so many what, glitches what are those challenges, Dr. Uh, Sen? Yeah. Right. Please go ahead. So, so if I talk about the demand and uh, supply issue, there are a lot many things that they have the plan for the vision 20, 20, uh, 2030. So they have uh, they have to reduce so many things. They have to work on the poverty reduction. They have to food sufficient. They have to do so many other things. And they have to the Kenya being member of the East Africa Community EAC is largely depend on the regional trade because the low tariff and similar preference. So Pakistan products are not well known in the Kenya market and we must have to uh, create the biggest uh, product area. So it is not about that we can, uh, we definitely want to have the oil and the energy uh, transaction over there. We right. have to have the big product market over there. So uh, by the supply chain and after that, uh, as I told you in 2021, we have done with the, uh, we have, uh, I mean, negotiate their free trade agreements and the tariff rates. So now we can have the smooth transaction through the through Pakistan and Kenya. So it is uh, uh, under the blue economy. It is also wonderful in the supply chain way. So this is very uh, important uh, uh, initiative right, that of we course. could do that. Of course, of course, this is very important. But uh, Mr. Shahjar, when we talk about uh, connectivity, um, what do you think that uh, what kind of international partners, of course, you earlier mentioned about that as well, that there are some glitches and challenges uh, when we talk about successful implementation or the development of Western Corridor. What kind of international partners uh, should be on board when we talk about development of this? And what could be the impact on both countries and the region, of course, uh, both countries needs, need these kind of uh, socio-political and, you know, developmental projects for uh, creating jobs as well. So what kind of benefits it could bring? So there are like a lot of like uh, uh, international multilateral partners that are focusing on Africa. There's the African Development Bank. Mm. There's also the Islamic Development Bank. So that are, also are there some initiatives that are particularly focused on the development of this West Corridor as well? Uh, I don't think there is any uh, project uh, working on the West Corridor right now. There is uh, the overall BRI network we, which we know of that's like fully funded by China and the Asian Infra Investment and Infrastructure Bank. So that basically handles the most of the BRI related. Uh, so when we talk about engage Africa policy, uh, does this policy, uh, you know, uh, you know, also covers or addresses these financial challenges as well that needs to be done to actually implement these projects like, you know, corridors and, and all that? So in that case, uh, in this question, I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Madam Naila that there is like a lot of homework to be done. Mm. And that homework should be done on the Pakistan side. If we are basically expanding our markets and our horizons, there needs to be more coordination. And this coordination does not only come from Ministry of Commerce and Trade. It has to bring together the expertise that MOFA has. It brings together people from TDAP. Uh, Ministry of Commerce and all of these uh, agencies have to very effectively coordinate with the Economic Coordination Committee as well. So there needs to be a holistic policy that brings together all of these uh, various uh, you know actors that are involved in uh, developing a policy that looks at all of these aspects as well. Right now the homework that I see is missing. Hmm. One key mm, but area. But SIFC we have <coughs> see a lot of potential yeah. that may ho be holding when we talk so about SIFC. So SIFC basically looks at investments coming inwards to Pakistan. Hmm. 
So it's not like focusing on expanding Pakistan's right. market to right. Africa or so other regions. So we may be needing mm -hmm. a framework for that as well. We need well. a separate fair framework mm -hmm. on ex increasing our exports mm -hmm. and bringing down the costs. Mm -hmm. So in that area, uh, one thing that we have like totally missed out in this discussion is the role of that Nadra is playing in mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the development of the digital mm -hmm. economy uh, in Africa. So Nadra started working in uh, Kenya by developing uh, machine readable passports Passport for their yes. immigration. Right. Yeah. And they provide a lot of like IT services and development of the Kenyan government and digitizing the Kenyan government as well. So IT exports from Pakistan side is a very huge market, not even uh, not only in uh, Kenya but the surrounding countries as well. Yes. And all of those country countries need these IT uh, services. Hmm. Uh, getting those IT services from Europe, for example, would be very expensive. Hmm. And Pakistan has tapped the right market, and this is a huge potential of in course. an economy which has very recently even joined uh, G20 as well in the form of the African Union. Hmm. Yes. And now they will be tapping more and like trying to digitize more of their economy. Hmm. Another area where Pakistan can learn from Kenya and that coordination is, I think, already taking place. I worked in Kenya for almost like eight months. First thing that I noticed was that there was no exchange of cash over there. Their digital financial services are very advanced. And that is where the whole concept of digital money, digital wallet, uh, wallets in the form of M-Pesa started. The Kenya was the place where mm -hmm. the whole concept of digital wallet initiated. Of and there is no cash transfers over there. Right. People so use their mobiles so to Pakistan basically make Kenyan their payments. So are also collaborating uh, in IT sector as, yes. ad, as well. So what are uh, some of the other potential areas in which you see potential and both countries should be collaborating more? So getting to know how basically uh, Kenya got its citizens to move on to digital financial services, that is a huge area. Why? Because this is how people convert uh, their finances into the formal economy. People start mm. banking and people start like mm. doing transactions course, over the phone important. and these transactions are then recorded of course. and then these come into the formal economy. Our problem Pakistan currently is facing is that we have like a lot of like economy which is informal in nature. And that is a huge, that of is, course. And that, that economy is that three times. That is more than the three times the regular economy. economy. Yes. And uh, we also like talk about like developing policies in uh, uh, the Ministry of Finance or when it comes to income tax and like taxation on how we basically broaden our tax net. How do we basically bring people into the formal economy uh, when we find out that uh, in our population, which is over 240 million people, over 60 percent of them don't even have a bank account. So how do we expect people to come into the formal economy? And that is like where we can learn from Kenya in providing digital financial services through their mobile phones, other ways in which people who don't have enough money to open a bank account can come into the formal mm. economy and make transactions in, in a very formal manner. Right. So that's like uh, the whole universe of digital financial services is open. Kenya is already using it and Pakistan has started uh, working on it but we can like learn from Kenya on how to bring the citizens to basically come into the, these platforms. Right, um, of course, and given the climate challenge both Pakistan and Kenya and are facing, uh, what do you think, what kind of uh, adaptive maybe strategies both countries uh, can collaborate on? Well, uh, these discussions are taking place at UNEP also and in the COP28 which was held last. Uh, so at international fora, all these uh, discussions are taking place. Uh, Pakistan is very supportive of Kenya when they have suffered droughts and other things and Kenya has also been supportive of Pakistan but uh, as Global South we have similar position when it comes to climate change. Then also we have similar position on UN reforms. Uh, we have a joint ministerial commission hmm. which discusses trade then we have uh, bilateral political consultations which are led at secretary level and that they consider all these questions that you asked me that in different organizations how do we work together mm. whether it's East African community or COMESA or SARC uh, we need to ECO as well both countries are part of East not ECO no. Commonwealth okay ECO is economic cooperation organization which is Central Asia, Afghanistan, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan. Right. But uh, COMESA is uh, 
the community of uh, South Africa, uh, South African countries. Mm. Uh, so that is different. So uh, how significant is uh, the role of such multilateral forums for enhancing the bilateral ties between Pakistan and Kenya? They are very important because mm. sometimes... And what are some of those important, uh, you know, uh, uh, forums, platforms in which both countries are collaborating? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, UN is an important uh, platform, uh, Commonwealth is an important platform, then Pakistan is soliciting observership of uh, East African community, then also as uh, Sheryar had mentioned the problems we had had in trade on tariffs and all that. For that we need also to be observers of the African organizations that are now working together to reduce these tariff barriers amongst African countries and also partner countries like Pakistan. So that is under consideration also. But uh, we are resource limited countries. Uh, so international platforms are very good for us to discuss when you do not have enough budget to travel right. to their country or right. them and to visit Pakistan. Sideline discussions and sideline exactly. talks are very important side. in exactly. that regard, of course. Exactly. Of course. Uh, Dr. Sain, when we talk about Pakistan and Kenya, we know that both countries have vibrant uh, diaspora as well. So what is the significance of this diaspora in enhancing and fostering people-to-people -people contacts and what needs to be done to promote tourism and cultural exchanges uh, between both the countries? See, of course, I mean, Kenya is the uh, tourist destination of, I mean, uh, a lot of jungles and other things, and it is a very good place, of course, in a, uh, for the tourism potential. But I just wanted to uh, talk on uh, another issue, which is very much important uh, as far as the Kenya uh, in the climate exchange program. Is the climate is recognized as a major threat to Kenya growth profile and the glo uh, global effort to address the climate change, especially reducing greenhouse gas emission and also offer positive opportunity for the Kenya economy and according to the expert if the Kenya maintain a low carbon development path as it grows it could size opportunities created by the global trend and decarbonize economy we must have to think and move on to the G20 and G21 and SEO and we have to educate ourselves not with the uh, previous and the older knowledge right Right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Shahjad, lastly, tell us about uh, the future trajectory of Pakistan's uh, ties with Kenya in the context of Pakistan's Engage Africa policy. So, uh, Mariam, I think uh, more people-to-people -people contacts, more business-to-business -business contacts, these are the need for, uh, for the hour right now. We need to develop more air links between uh, mm -hmm. Pakistan and Kenya, uh, preferably direct ones. And we need to learn also on how Kenya has developed its tourism industry because Pakistan also has a strong focus on bringing more uh, uh, investments into Pakistan in terms of like tourism. Kenya has uh, all sorts of tourism which is very popular, it's a tourist destination. Yes. Um, it shares the same geographical dynamics that Pakistan has, it's very similar. Why? Because Kenya is also surrounded by some states which are fragile. Yes. Uh, in the form of uh, Somalia, uh, Sudan, we've already mm. talked Instable about Instable political environment. They get like a lot of issues mm. from uh, insurgents uh, like uh, Al-Shabaab. There's a lot of petty crime as well. Given all of these factors, East Africa, especially Kenya, receives one of the largest tourism influxes uh, th from throughout uh, Africa. They have uh, the safaris, they have like national parks, they have like beach tourism, coastal tourism. And the fact that they're like so advanced on that, these like petty security issues go into the backdrop. So that is like one area where Pakistan can cooperate with uh, uh, right. Kenya and to developing our tourism networks as well. For that we need more people to people contact. We want right. pe Pakistani people to like go to Kenya and like uh, experience what tourism is uh, mm. like over there. Of course. Thank you very much Mr. Shir Jar Khan for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much Ambassador Naila Chauhan for joining us in today's program. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sen Javed, for joining us in today's program. Of course, in today's program, we talked about uh, the multifaceted relations between Pakistan and Kenya. Of course, there's a lot of potential when we talk about these ties, and there's a lot that needs to be done uh, to enhance the trade volume uh, to uh, $2, uh, $2 billion between both the countries. Uh, of course, Pakistan.
Pakistan needs to streamline its policies when we talk about implementation of Engage Africa policy. Uh, from trade corridors to uh, the cultural exchange programs, there is a lot of potential uh, in Africa for Pakistan. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz. <laughs>